Hey there, Nick Didathakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over some tips and things to think about to avoid information paralysis or basically being stuck in an indecision loop. And this is something that happens all the time as software developers, right? We're usually tasked to go ahead and research something and then develop it. And oftentimes during the researching phase, you know, you usually need to choose between A or B. And in this case, A or B could be anything, right? It could be a library, it could be an entire tech stack, it could be a web framework. You know, maybe it's a specific implementation strategy for a specific technology that you're working with, right? Maybe there's like four really good ways to do it, but which one do you choose? And I don't know about you, but I tend to have a flaw in that I'm very much a perfectionist. And I don't think that's that rare. I think a lot of developers have that. But I think maybe the reasons that we have that are maybe different. And this video really, it's going to apply to anyone, not just like perfectionists or whatever, right? But for me, when it comes to being perfectionist, like I am never afraid to ask questions or I never feel, feel embarrassed about making a bad decision or something like that. For me, the perfectionism uh, issue really comes down to the what if. It is, let's say that I have like two or three potential ways to do something. If I decide to choose the first way, you know, because I just happen to think it's better at the time, it's very hard for me to commit to that and go all in because my brain is just like, but what if? But what if you chose choice or door number two, right? It's like the unknown. It's like, it could be way better. It could be way worse. It could be about the same. Uh, you don't know. And until you actually try out both, then it's very hard to determine which one is better because if you don't try them and you're just stuck in like a research loop and just theory crafting everything and trying to make assumptions or a decision based on that, then yeah, it's super easy just to like talk yourself to death and just never do anything. And, uh, you know, this didn't come up that recently for me, but it sort of almost did. It didn't get to the point where it was like, I'm totally stuck. I don't know what to do. Oh no. But it definitely got to the point where uh, in my own mind, I'm like, look, man, this is not that big of a decision. Like just pick something and roll with it. And you know what? If you think the other one is better, just pick that and actually do that too. Implement it twice. Do like basically a proof of concept, do both of them. And now you can actually make like uh, an actual assessment on things that you actually developed and you can form your own opinions based on like things that you picked out from actually doing it instead of just reading about it. And yeah, that was, I don't know, I don't want to say, oh, a profound thought or something like that, but I do figure it is worth making a video about because, I don't know, if you've ever watched some videos on my channel, I tend to have stuff from, I don't know, all sorts of different topics, right? It's sometimes dev environment stuff, sometimes it's Tmux stuff, sometimes it's Vim stuff. Uh, we talk about Flask, we talk about Docker, we talk about Git, we talk about everything, right? And uh, this video, for me at least, it's, it's kind of just an outlet because... I'm just a developer, right? It's like in my day to day, these are the things that I do. And uh, I tend to make videos about the things that I'm doing. And this week was all about that. So that's why I'm making this type of video. I know most of my other videos are usually like more practical hands on demo about implementing something, but this time around, uh, it happens to be like this. And I did make videos like this in the past, you know, different topics, but more just like high level, like programming stuff. And, you know, it's pretty well received. So uh, yeah, that's why I figured I would make this video. And um, I ended up reading this one article here about what it's like to be a manager for the Linux kernel. Now, in my role now, uh, I mostly do contract work and actually just took a full-time position working somewhere as uh, lead operations. So basically doing a lot of infrastructure work, like devs, devops -y things, right? Like implementing Kubernetes and Terraform, all, all this great stuff. And I have no inclination ever to be any type of manager, but I was just Googling around like, you know, how to deal with like really big code bases and stuff. And, you know, the code base for the place that I'm working for now, it's not massive. I mean, it's pretty big, but um, yeah. Anyways, like I just came across this article and there was things here written for the perspective of a manager, but I think it really applies to software development too. And like when I read this, it like really like gave me that eureka moment that like some of these decisions that I was getting stuck on over the last week, which I wouldn't say like I'm really stuck, stuck on, but you know, I found myself in like a pretty deep research loop, like just trying to theory craft some stuff. And yeah, after reading this, it just like, it all clicked. And it just came down to like this one sentence here. And it's like, it helps to realize that the key difference between a big decision and a small one is whether you can fix your decision afterwards, right? And you know, the more I thought about this, the actual decisions I was making, like these are all pretty small ones. It's like, well, let me give you some context, right? In this specific case, it was implementing Terraform to manage all of their infrastructure. And I have a pretty okay amount of experience working with Terraform, but mo mostly it was at a smaller scale. Like I wasn't even dealing with like multiple environments, so, you know, like testing or staging versus prod. It was basically just production. And, you know, it was a couple of uh, resources on DigitalOcean, you know, nothing like super, super complicated, right? We're talking like maybe less than 150 lines of Terraform configuration to get all this up and running, right? Whether or not you, you use Terraform or not isn't important, but 
um, just think like, I guess I'll walk through like some of the pain points I had, like when it comes to researching things and like, you know, eventually when it came to conclude, but there was just so many things to think about. Like I already knew like, yes, I'm going to be using Terraform, but you know, well, how should I structure my code? Like, should I do it like this? Should I do it like that? Should I use Terraform workspaces? What about directories? Should I have a separate directory for each environment? Should every single environment have its own state file, which I think is a good idea, by the way. And they're on AWS. So like maybe every environment should have its own uh, completely separate AWS account, right? Just to avoid a situation where you accidentally run like a Terraform apply against production when you think it's testing and then you just blow up everything by accident, right? Like you definitely want to eliminate as much issues like that. And yeah, this just led me down like a ton of different research, right? It's like, well, should I use Terraform Cloud to like manage remote state? Should I use my own S3 bucket instead? What about locking? Okay, cool. DynamoDB. Well, you know, what about Terragrin? Is that something I should be using? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not, right? And this just led to just skimming a ton of YouTube videos, reading a ton of blog posts, reading a lot of documentation, looking for best practices. And you know, after a couple of days of doing that, I don't think that was a waste of time. I actually learned a hell of a lot. But I also think that, you know, could I have done it faster if I implemented stuff sooner? I don't know, probably not. But I think I was just getting to that point where it was like, dude, just make a decision and just pull the trigger and try something and then try the other thing too. And then try them both and like pick the one that you actually like based on uh, actually doing it instead of just like you know, reading documentation or theory crafting. And uh, yeah, that's basically what I did, right? I just tried to set things up. So it's like, I made a separate directory for every environment, separate state files for every environment. Yes, there's a little bit of code duplication. I didn't bother going into Terragrin for now because it doesn't feel like a problem worth solving right now. And yeah, these are all small decisions because it's like, if I just want to change to the other one, like, all right, cool. So we decide to use TerraCloud in the end or something like that. It's like, nice. I get to delete like, you know, a 30 line module for uh, an S3 backend or something like that. Or like, maybe I decide to use TerraGrant and it's like, I can remove some duplication and some stuff. And it's like this refactoring of things afterwards would be uh, a day's work, a couple hours worth, uh, uh, worth of work. It's like, these are all super small decisions. And I think it's really important to just understand that a lot of tech choices are pretty small decisions. Um, I'm not saying all of them are, you know, it, but I think in a lot of cases, some of them actually are because even when it comes to something as important, right, as picking a tech stack, like, oh no, like what web framework should I use? It's like, well, you know, if you use Flask or Django, Rails, Phoenix, uh, any type of node framework that's popular, same thing with Go, uh, Laravel, whatever, pick your poison, right? These are all modern languages and frameworks and chances are uh, that uh, whatever you pick is going to be fine, right? In the P99 or, you know, 95 or 95% case or 99% case, uh, you can probably return a web response in less than 100 milliseconds using basically any modern web framework. So yeah, uh, small decisions. Now I understand like, you know, the big rewrite, right? If you write your whole entire massive application, decide like six months later that you need to rewrite it in a different language. Uh, maybe that is a big decision because it's a lot of time, but uh, yeah, it's not like a big decision in the sense that maybe it's going to bankrupt you and like kill the whole company. Maybe it would, maybe it won't. But yeah, I guess the takeaway here is kind of just around, don't be afraid to make proofs of concept with multiple things. Th you know, if you think maybe like, well, I don't know if I want to use Flash or Django, like maybe just like spin up uh, a smaller version of your application in both, you know, pick the one that you prefer using. Same thing with Rails or whatever, maybe you prefer writing Ruby instead of Python, right? Uh, so many options and it's really hard to just theory craft this based on other people's opinions. I feel like you really need to form your own opinions. And the only way you're gonna do that is by actually taking action and writing some code. Now, I don't wanna narrate this whole entire uh, post here, which I will leave in the, in the description, by the way. I think even if you have no intent to ever be a manager, which I don't, by the way, I forgot if I already said that because I re-recorded the intro to this one like 11 times, but uh, yeah, even if you're not gonna to be a manager is still very worth reading this one um, because yeah I mean the idea here is right here right like any decision can be made small by uh, just always making sure that if you're wrong which you basically will be you can always undo the damage later by backtracking and you know it goes on to say here somewhere I don't know exactly where it is I don't want to narrate this but uh, yeah technical decisions are usually things that you can backtrack on pretty easily and like worst case scenario you kind of just like well in this context is about a manager so it's like wasting another person's time to implement something but yeah, definitely worth it just to like do stuff more. And it's so obvious and, you know, it's things I've known for a long time where it's like, just do it, right? Like the Nike slogan or uh, just build something, right? Like building is the best way to learn. It totally definitely is. And use your own brain when you're actually stuck to the point where it feels like you're over-researching. That's the exact point when you should just go implement something and check it out. And uh, I just want to mention here too, like a couple of years ago, I wrote this one blog post, like, you know, would Socrates use Docker today? Because uh, back then in 2017, when I wrote this one, 
uh, I just learned about Socratic questioning, and I don't want to make a dedicated video about this one because I do have a whole blog post about this, which I'll link in the description as well. But uh, yeah, the idea about Socratic questioning is it's a really good systematic approach to basically compare tools or libraries or web frameworks or uh, implementation details or anything. Honestly, it has nothing to do with programming at all because, you know, this is something that was basically invented 2,500 years ago, but uh, it applies to everything in life. And it, it's really good. It's a systematic way to like break down a problem by just keeping, uh, by asking very specific types of questions. It, you know, think about it like a pros and cons list, but on steroids and way more guided. And this whole blog post goes into um, things to think about, right? It's like clarify your thinking, challenge your assumptions, blah, 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 blah. And then there's a whole bunch of bullet points here. Now, keep in mind, like usually these questions, they're in the context of like, asking someone directly, like if you were sitting across a table from someone and, and asking them something like, you know, why are you saying that? Like, what exactly does that mean? Like, how does that relate to this thing? And then you can challenge uh, your assumptions, right? Like, what else could we assume? What would happen if we do this? And like, what about probing for reason and evidence? Like, there's so many great little sub uh, bullets here that you can just apply to any technical decision or any facet of your own life. And in this blog post, I actually uh, take most of these bullets here and apply them to uh, Docker as a technology, right? It's like, what's the nature of Docker? Well, you know, Docker offers a better way to build and distribute your applications. And, you know, this is not like a sales pitch or a video on using Docker, right? I don't care whether or not you use Docker, but uh, this is an example of how you can apply Socratic questioning to a very specific thing uh, related to technology. So maybe you can apply this back to whatever you're trying to learn and uh, get some insights there. I think it's definitely an exercise worth doing. So even if this takes you a half a day to do all of these, uh, it is well worth it because you're going to definitely flesh out details of what you might not think to ask yourself before. And then when you have all of that analyzed, then you can go and actually make a proof of concept with, you know, one or both tools. And yeah, you're going to be better off in the end, I think. So yeah, that's about it for this video. I know this one is not really based on doing some, uh, you know, live demo or implementation, but yeah, sometimes these videos are basically just me being uh, a developer and a human being, right? So for me over the last week, it was basically... Uh, not being stuck, but yeah, doing stuff like this. But anyways, yeah, I don't want to ramble too much here. Uh, I will link all these links in the description so you can read them, check them out on your own. Uh, let us know in the comments below what your takeaways are from reading either of these blog posts or uh, articles here. With that said, thanks a lot for watching the video. Uh, if you liked it, please give a thumbs up because it helps a lot. And I will see you in the next video.